It gives us great honor at this time to welcome today's commencement speaker, four-time Super Bowl champion and quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers, two-time Super Bowl MVP and Pro Football Hall of Fame inductee Terry Paxton Bradshaw. For generations, Terry Bradshaw has represented the best of professional football, both in his legendary exploits on the field and in his distinguished career in the announcing booth. Widely acknowledged as today's preeminent NFL studio personality, Mr. Bradshaw serves in a dual role as co-host and analyst for Fox NFL Sunday and Thursday Night Football. In addition to his broadcasting career, Mr. Bradshaw has appeared in several feature films, guest starred on numerous television series, hosted his own talk show, starred alongside Henry Winkler, William Shatner, and George Foreman in 2016's top-rated summer NBC reality show, Better Late Than Never. Add to that gospel and country singer, New York Times best-selling author, and a breeder of championship quarter horses. As a widely sought after motivational speaker, Mr. Bradshaw speaks to Fortune 500 companies and major corporations across the country. Energizing and motivating in his inspirational style, charisma, and personality, Mr. Bradshaw has become one of the most sought after sports personalities speaking today. A native of Shreveport, Louisiana, Mr. Bradshaw went on to attend Louisiana Tech, where he still holds the single season passing and total offense records. He was a first-team Associated Press All-American as a senior in 1970, and later that year received a Bachelor of Science in Physical Education from Louisiana Tech. Mr. Bradshaw has racked up numerous awards and honors during his long, diverse career and his work on behalf of those less fortunate that has raised a tremendous amount of money while earning the gratitude and respect of countless charitable organizations. He was named the NFL Player of the Year by the Associated Press, Sport Magazine, and the Maxwell Club of Philadelphia following his 1978 season with the Steelers. And in 1979, he shared Sports Illustrated's Man of the Year, along with Willie Stargell of the Pittsburgh Pirates. In 2001, he added yet another prestigious distinction with the NFL Alumni's Career Achievement Award. And outside the realm of football, he was named 1999's Man of the Year by Big Sisters of America, 2000's Father of the Year by the National Father's Day Council, and in October 2001 became NFL's first and only player to re receive a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. Terry spends time at his home in Oklahoma with his wife, Tammy, and Tammy, we're so pleased to have you join us and be with us today as well. He has three daughters, Rachel, Aaron, and Lacey. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a warm Trine University welcome to our 2023 commencement speaker, Terry Bradshaw. You made it hard on me, Dr. Brooks. Oh, all right, all right. Wow, that's a lot of stuff right there. Good morning. Can I have an amen? Thank you, brothers and sisters. Well, my first commencement ad address, and uh, I did no, no, none, zero pre preparation. And I felt like, why should I do that? You're all smarter than me. I couldn't possibly impress you with really fancy stuff. So I'd be no quoting of literature. There'll be no quoting of the famous presidents or the great minds of the world, because that'd be a waste of, well, your time and my time, but we're not going to do that this morning. Today is a celebration. You're all getting, a, getting the heck out of here and getting on with your lives, and that's what's most important. I will say this. I will start this uh, small talk off with this little bit of advice for all of you. Everybody right now, Turn around with someone next to you and shake that person's hand. Everybody do that right now. Put it up there. Shaking hands. Shaking hands. Shaking hands. Shaking hands. Everybody shake hands. Shaking hands. Shaking hands. All right. 
That's some good stuff right there, wasn't it? I ask you to do that, but you just learned the most important lesson in life, and that is how to greet and say hello to people. You'll never accomplish anything from this day forward that you don't have to say thank you to somebody else. If you think you're the most important thing in the world, you're making a huge mistake. You're not. If you think you're not going to fail, another mistake. If you think you're going to be successful, that's necessary for you to be happy. Happiness is not, de is not determined by the amount of money you make, but the amount of joy that you'll have in your heart. Money comes and goes, and therefore it'll affect the way you act and the way you appreciate each day. Happiness fluctuates from each moment. It's easily affected by not being able to buy a car or not being able to pay off a bill or not being able to get the job you wanted or the wife and you having a fight or whatever. And so therefore your life is always going to be ups and downs. We don't want this. We just want this. So you're always going to experience that in life. So therefore it's important that if all the things that you do from this day forward, everyone you come in contact with, do what I do every morning. This morning, no exception. I'm staying here at beautiful university, crying. I'm sitting in this cottage, cool air coming in, beautiful day. Wife's up, she's ironed my shirt, this shirt. Really happy about wearing this shirt this morning. I sit up on bed, I take in some air. She says, are you up? Yep. I'm feeling good. I put a smile on my face and the very two, the very two things that will carry me throughout the rest of this day are the same th two things that are going to carry you. Ladies and gentlemen, learn how to shake hands. Learn how to make contact with other people because you will find out in life that that is the most important thing. So learn how to shake hands. Second thing is when you draw in air, you are drawing in God's gift of life. Everybody, oh, feels good. Man, I'm here, and I'm telling you, we packed them in, didn't we? I told you I'd bring in a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're alive. We're having a wonderful time. The family's here, and all of you beautiful people are sitting out there, caps and gowns, and got this fancy dude here with the black and the orange striped stuff. I don't know what you do, but you look pretty good. So we're shaking hands, we're drawing in there, and then we're learning how to smile, people. Listen, if you see what's going on in the world today, and we have more people that are happy, more people that are engaging, more people that learn how to smile, you break down barriers when you smile. The face is a reflection of who you are. The smile on your face tells everybody he's a nice person. She's a nice lady. Learn the simple things in life because you got the education here at Triumph, they got the education. Now I couldn't have gone here. My GPA was, well, lacking. <laughs> I had a, um, when I graduated from Louisiana Tech, I only graduated with a 396 and I know that's nowhere near what we got in here today. Y'all are way up there. I have a PE degree. It, only, it wasn't in physical education. PE stands for petroleum engineering. So you got that screwed up right there. And the 396 is cumulative. So if you add freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year, that's how you do it, Doc. Dr. Brooks knows. That's a man that uh, knows all about education. Why do you think he hired me? I know, I know a lot, I know how to artificial breed horses and cattle, that's smart stuff. I know how to talk about football on television, that's smart stuff. I know how to sing, I can sing. Wasn't asked to sing today, I would have loved to have sung for all of you, but that's, you know, that's, that's smart stuff. Smarty didn't ask me. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I can do but there are only a few things I have control of. All right, I just gave them to you, shaking hands, smiling, and breathing air. That's just God giving you that breath and you taking control of your life. Folks, you gotta take control of your life. It's not always gonna be easy. It's uh, not always gonna be rewarding. 
But from this day forward, take control of your life. I don't mind you saying to yourself, I love me some me. That's okay. It's okay. If you don't love yourself, why should I love you? So it's okay. But also it's okay. If you can think that, just don't say it, okay? Show some humility about yourself. But it's okay to love who you are. It's important to love who you are. It's important to be proud who you are. It's important that what you do from this day forward, you chose to do it. It was your choice. And you're going to do it because you love it. I am a man God called me to be a football player. There's nothing wrong with being a football player. That's my calling in life. I made my living, Dr. Brooks, putting my hand, my hand under another man's butt. <laughs> Before you leave here today, I encourage each and every one of you, moms, dads, graduates, get a buddy, bend them over there. <laughs> Slap those hands up there, cheeks. That's pretty good stuff right there now. You're not gonna get that from any other intellect but me. And here's, here's what's Here's what's really strange. I liked it. <laughs> Take control. Understand the do's and don'ts of life in this society. Take control of you. Don't expect nothing less than greatness from you. You're the only one that's in charge. Don't listen to other people. When people said I was dumb and called me Ozark Ike and little Abner, said I couldn't read a defense, said I couldn't spell cat if you spotted me the C and the T. And then I went out about Dr. Brooks and the person that said that I threw four touchdown passes against him in the Super Bowl. And afterwards, I looked him up and asked, how do I look now? How's my spelling now? <laughs> we all have to take charge and understand that our lives are short. I'm 74 years old. I battled two bouts of cancer this year. Thank God I'm in, uh, I don't have them anymore. Still good treatments, but I'm, I'm cancer free. And listen, you have no idea. When Dr. Brooks contacted me to come here and speak, I didn't hesitate because you're my kind of people. And people is the closing formula that I want to give you today. Listen, you can breathe air, you can smile, you can shake hands all you want. You can have the greatest mind that there is. But if you don't like people, you are going to be one miserable human being. Learn how to like people. Learn how to be kind. We all want to fight back when things are mean and hateful to us. But the Bible says we come back with grace. We come back with kindness. Well, that's how you break people down when they're mean to and hateful to you. Learn how to like people. My left tackle was from Oklahoma State, John Cobb. He was scared of the defensive end. He was scared of the head coach, Chuck Noll. And I used to tell John, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that, coach. You just hold that guy. Bite him. Spit on him. I don't care what you do. Don't let him tackle me because it's my blind side. My left guard, Sam Davis. My center, Mike Webster, God rest his soul, Mike's in heaven now. I had to, go, I had to ride him like a jockey on a horse because his butt was about that high off the floor and I had to squat down real low to take a snap. <laughs> Loved him. Right guard Moon Mullins out of Southern Cal and I nicknamed him Moon because he was always staring up in the sky. And hey, Brad, it's hey, a beautiful day, man. It's a great day. We're here. It's a great game. We're going to have a great game. Okay, Moon. Right tackle was 6'7, 295. Larry Brown out of Kansas. We called him Bubba. Huge man. Tight end Benny Cunningham, 6'5, 260, out of Clemson, who always wanted to do the shortcut. Ladies and gentlemen, do never, do not, do never, never, do not take the shortcut. That's the easy way. Give me the hard way. Benny wanted to run a five-yard hook. You know what a five-yard hook is? You run off the line of scrimmage, Dr. Brooks, down five yards, you turn around, bingo, five yards. 
What good is five yards? It's boring for me. I want to throw it 20 yards. My personality, my demeanor, my DNA says go for the gusto. That's me. So I learned about Terry Paxton Bradshaw. I know me inside and out. I'm talking about people. Talking about people, mirror economics, mirror psychology, stand in front of a mirror and evaluate who you are. Be honest with yourself. Only then when you're in the quiet of your bathroom and you're looking or shaving this morning, no exception, what little hair I got, I'm shaving it off my face. I acknowledge the fact I'm ugly, ugly man. I'm not attractive. Raise the hand. All you ugly people out there, let me see your hand. Get them up. Get them up. Get them up. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I'm a little overweight. Got a little water retention. Who else has got water retention? Get them up, get them real high. You get them up real high. Mirror economics, people. Flanker Lynn Swan was always open. You'll always run into people that have the answers. You'll never meet, you're always guaranteed to meet someone who will have the answers. They'll have the answers on everything. Everything. You're too smart. You're too well-educated here at Twine University. You know better. Watch out for them. Be nice to them, but watch out for them. Frank O'Hara, God rest his soul, just passed away. He stuttered, and he got excited, and when he wanted things special in a huddle, and when he wanted to run a play, he very seldom spoke to me. We were in the Super Bowl and I just got sacked and they roughed me up and he got mad and he got in the huddle and he was trying to tell me a play he wanted me to run. And he was, hey, Brad, 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 I'm looking at him. I'm looking at him like, okay, bub, we only got 30 seconds here. What's Brad, Brad. Finally, he couldn't get it out because I had to call a play and move on with it. Ran the play, I ran on 93 tackle trap. We went for a touchdown, we go to the sideline. Then he said, you know, that's funny. I wanted you to run 93 tackle trap. And I said, well, how come you're stuttering, stuttering in the huddle and you're not stuttering on the sideline? I got excited. Okay, you got excited. But you got to be able to communicate with me a little better than that. And if you're Frank O'Harris, Hall of Famer. Rocky Blyer from Appleton, Wisconsin. Talking about people. Talking about the Steeler dynasty. Talking about things that you're going to be a part of. You'll create your own dynasty. You'll have your own business. You'll be up here one day getting your... I'm getting something right. Before I get real intellectual on you, I want to make sure I'm getting, getting something. And The Rock with the Notre Dame. Got, blew, uh, got his foot sh shot up in Vietnam, got it fixed, came back, was a, wrote a book, Fighting Back, did a movie about his life, Fighting Back. Maybe one of these days, you too will be heroes. Who knows who is out here right next president of the United States, next president of, of some steel company. Where's that guy? Where's that little guy? Where is he? Where's the steel guy? Hey, what's his name? Keith, Keith, Keith. Can't even hear. You listening to me, Keith? Not a word have you heard. Someone translate. You two are going to be running com companies and your employees are people. Rocky Blair always wanted to run the football, but Doc, I never let him run. He was a blocking back. And finally, we let him run it against the Green Bay Packers. And we were playing in Milwaukee, and I ran him 19 times in a row because he was doing good, and he's out of breath, and he was throwing up in the huddle. And I told him we still going to run him, and he passed out, and Stallworth held him up, I split in, and Rocky fell over, his eyes had rolled back, his ears had blood and all, stuff coming out of his nose, and John is jumping up, get him off, Brad, get him off, Brad, get him off, Brad. And I looked over at him and said, oh my God, he's dead. Franco, go get Rocky from John. And Franco, a graduate of Penn State University. Brad, he, he, he out. I know he out. That's why I want you to go get him from John, because John's going to be out too. All right, so go bring him over here. He, he out. He drug him in the huddle. Here's one thing you're going to learn. 
Reward is a beautiful thing. I love rewards. I like it when people pat me on my back. I like it that today I'm, I'm going to get, a, when am I get, I'm getting something, right? Make sure. Today I'm going to get honored. I love it. I can't wait to post it. So cool. Reward, reward is a beautiful thing. I'm going to reward him because he's a good employee. He's a good man. He worked hard. He had 19 carries, 99 yards. And he told me he had a book signing at Coughlin's in downtown Milwaukee from one to six. I am dang sure going to make him proud of himself. And uh, he passed out. I asked Franco to carry him across the line of scrimmage. He held him. He's bouncing. I rode him. He got his touchdown. And I felt good as his employer, I felt like, not his teammate. Reward. Ladies and gentlemen, it is always... It will never cease to be about somebody else. The sooner you can learn that, the happier you're going to be. You can have the brilliant mind, the most brilliant mind, the most creative mind in the world. But if there's nobody there that wants to work with you, that wants to pay attention to you, you've accomplished nothing. They don't like you. People. 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 Stalwarts competed with Lynn Swan, competition. This is another thing that's beautiful, competition. Oh, you got to love competition. All you cap and gowners out there, you're stepping off into a world of competition. Man, you're going to have some doubts. And someone's going to want something as bad as you do. And you're going to find that out really quickly. And then you know what's going to happen to you because you're a champion. You graduated from trying. You're going to buckle up and you're going to get them. You're going to outwork them, outthink them, outsmart them, outlike them. Competition. Stallworth wanted to catch the passes. I'm a quarterback. He knew my heart. Here's another thing about people. Learn their hearts. When you learn the heart of a human being, you very seldom make bad choices or bad decisions. Stallworth knew I like to throw the football deep. That was my calling card, deep. And he'd lean in with a high-pitched voice. He had the highest-pitched voice you have ever heard, Dr. Brooks. Brad, don't beat the ball. I can beat my man deep. You can beat him deep? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okie dokie. People, when you stand back, when the end of your time has come and mine's coming, I just hope it's not too soon, you're going to say to yourself, I was a good person. I was a good husband. I was a good wife. I was a good family man, family woman. I have my faith, which I lean on heavily. It's always, always going to be a reflection on you and you're in charge. So when you back up at the end of the day and the festivities continue, jump up in the air when you sling those caps, click your heels and say to yourself, what a great day this is. And I'm going to remember what Terry Bradshaw said, although it wasn't very intellectual today. I am going to remember to draw in air because I'm alive. I'm going to remember to smile because smiling has an impact on people's life, a reflection of the soul and the spirit of the human being. And then finally, finally, what are we all going to do? We're going to breathe, we're going to smile, and we're going to touch. We're going to shake hands. Let me tell you something. Why do you think athletes slap each other on the butt and slap and shake hands? Man, there's nothing more bonding than a shaking of a hand. Learn how to shake the hands of people. And then when it's all said and done, at the end of your day, when you're laying in your bed at night, you'll be able to say to yourself, Dr. Brooks, and by the way, God bless you, your family, on your retirement. This is one heck of a fine human being right here. Give him a round of applause. This is a good dude right here. You're going to be missed for all you've done for this university. But at the end of the day, when you sit and put your head on your pillow, you'll be able to say to yourself, one good something happened to me today. And if you can't say that, then you didn't have a good day. How can you go through a day without one good something happen? And that means shaking a hand or encouragement or whatever it is to other people. One good something happened to me a day. And if you got a mom and dad and they're still living, 
People that brought you in this world, they deserve your love. Call them and tell them you love them. Call them and tell you how much you appreciate them. Man, my, my father's gone. My mother just turned 94 last week, still got her. Take time to love those that love you more than you possibly could imagine. Love your mom and dad. God bless all of you. What a wonderful day this has been for me. Enjoy this moment. It's all about you, graduates. Thank you. Oh, oh bless you. Bless you so much. Thank you so much, Terry, for your inspiring message. What an honor it is to have you with us this morning. Thank you, thank you so much. Tryon University follows the long established academic practice of recognizing through the granting of honorary degrees those distinguished individuals who have realized significant achievement in their respective fields or have made a substantial contribution to the work of the university. We have the privilege of recognizing Terry Paxton Bradshaw, and I ask that Dr. John Shannon, our provost and president-elect, to please escort to the podium our special guest, Terry Bradshaw, to join me as we award the honorary degree. On behalf of the faculty and with approval of the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present Mr. Bradshaw to you for the awarding of the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters. All right. Thank you. By virtue of the laws of the state of Indiana and the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Trine University, by direction of the trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I'm pleased to confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining, appertaining thereto. And in testimony whereof, we invest you with this hood, and I present you with this diploma. Congratulations, Dr. Bradshaw. Thank you.